family, the Lord said, he's going to return. And he's going to snatch every lawbreaker. Say, I, I do church, but you enjoy your sin. You're a lawbreaker. My God. And you think you're safe. All of our sexual sin, all of our idolatry, all of our love and other things. He said there's certain people will never get into the kingdom of God. Idolaters, liars, those who practice sexual immorality. You love your sexual sin. You love lying, cheating, stealing. You love like we love all these things thinking like the reapers are not coming for you. Right. Like I, I, the Lord right here makes it clear. He said that he is going to send his reapers. They are coming for you. And that he is going to harvest. Watch. He's going to snatch out of his kingdom the world that belongs to him. Nobody is getting away with anything. Every corrupt politician. Every corrupt person. Every unsafe athlete. Every unsafe R&B star. Every rapper that's unsaved, every preacher that's unsaved, every false prophet, every person who claims to be a Christian who loves sin, every person in sexual immorality, every liar, every thief, every person who is an idolater, every person that worships anything other than Jesus. He says, I'm coming for all of them. My God. I'm going to gather them all up first. Watch. And I'm going to throw them in the fiery furnace. And then he says, in that place. You know what that is? Location. Yeah. This is for all the liberal professors and all the liberal Christians that says, oh, the Bible, we don't even need to take it at face value. It's all literary. It's all allegory. There's no such thing as hell. A loving God would never create hell. Really? Jesus taught about hell more than heaven. Yeah. Now pay attention. Listen. Listen to me. He's telling us, everyone you know who is not saved, all of them. I've got family members who are in the, who are in the path of wrath. Man, this is, a, man, they're going to be, they're going to be snatched by the reapers. And as they're being pulled, they're going to be begging God for forgiveness. But time is going to be, it's going to be too late. He says, I'm going to throw them in that fiery furnace. And in that place, you know what place is? Location. They're going to be weeping and gnashing their teeth. You know what that is? They're going to be sorrow when they realize they missed the kingdom. You know what gnashing of teeth is? It is the expression of pain. And preacher, I don't get it. When you die, people die apart from Christ. There is no annihilation of the body. Come on, family. The scripture teaches us everyone that awakes on the other side of death, they awake conscious. They're going to be, listen to me, man. Why? We need to be thinking about this, man. They're going to wake up conscious on the other side. And in their consciousness, they're going to realize they've missed the kingdom. They're going to be dragged down to a place of torment. And they're going to have a body fit for destruction. They're going to have a body that's going to allow them to sit in fire. Watch. Man, forever. Like... Can you even fathom in your mind what it is to wake up on the other side of eternity? Know that you missed the kingdom. I was in church, but, I, but sinning and wilding out and having fun. Doing the church and the world at the same time. Thinking you was safe. Or the atheist. Or the Hindu. Or the Muslim. They wake up and realize now they're far away from God. And now they can't get out of that place. How many... How many... Men and women are dying every day. And they are entering this place. And this is happening while the wheat is in the field doing what? Wow. Now I'm talking to you. Wow. Now I need 10 more minutes. I don't care. This is happening every day while the wheat is doing what? What are you doing? What am I doing? Right? When you understand this parable... In light of a biblical worldview, that you understand this life is not about you getting to a bag all the time or building monuments to yourself. Who cares how many followers you have? Don't you understand all of this is going to be burned up? Then if you understand the parable and you understand that we're living in the hour of redemption, then what does it say about your time? 
My God, how should that affect your prayer life? Some of you men, if the kingdom depended on your prayers, the whole thing would collapse. Listen to your prayers. You always begging God for stuff. Are you pleading for souls? Are you pleading for the spread of the gospel? Are you pleading for the planting of new churches? Are you pleading for missionaries who are in places where there's not a lot of seed? Are you pleading for your unsaved loved ones for their eyes to be open? Are you pleading for their ears to be... Just listen to the garbage you pray. If this hour is only about the harvest, then what about your prayers? What about your money? What are you supporting? You put all this money into your hair and into your house and into your bills and you won't put a dollar into the Lord's work during the hour of redemption? What about your activity? You won't help move gospel ministry forward? You just, you just want to be... Ta- you, like, why are you content to just be a spectator during the hour of redemption? Yes. 